Good morning, everybody. I hope that you are well. Let's get right to it. We live in a very uncertain world right now, and we've had historically the most overvalued stock market in the history of the world. Does it mean that things can't go higher, at least in the short term? No, it certainly, uh, it certainly could go higher. But the point is, are you really getting value when you're buying 20, 30, 40, 50 times, 100 times earnings? When back in 1980, when I first, 79, 80, when I first became interested in a market, you could buy stocks for five to six times earnings, very cheap. You buy things, do you load up on things when they're on sale? Or do you load up when things have gotten ridiculously expensive? Economics teaches us. You buy more when something is cheap, not when something is very expensive. Investing is one of those things that temporarily can defy the laws of economics. Sadly, and this is why it becomes such a trap, financial trap for people. When stocks are cheap and on sale, very few in people are interested in buying them. Because maybe interest rates are high elsewhere, savings accounts are paying well, other alternative investments, real estate, people don't really care. That's why they're cheap. Stay cheap for a long time. But then when situations change and economics changes, stocks start to rise. And they rise a long way and they start to pick up professional investors on the way and people that are bargain hunters. They're willing to sit on things for a long time. Okay? They rise, they rise, they rise. And only when the stock market starts to do something really spectacular, a Tesla explodes, a Google, a Facebook captures the headlines. Foof. People start to become interested. A whole new generation of people. Robin Hood is born. Hey, I can buy one share. I can buy half a share. Now we're on Reddit. We're all getting involved in the stocks. We're moving the market. Wow. What you're not doing is realizing that you're not buying a bargain. But sadly, the most people get interested. It's the, uh, the vortex, the swirl gathers in more people, the higher it goes. It defies the laws of economics and it traps your money. You're not getting a bargain. That being the case, people have sold out. Some people have realized that things are not on sale. They're, not, they're very dear. They're very expensive. And when people are jealous about what you own, it might be time to get rid of it. But let's talk about alternatives today and where you can put anywhere from twenty-five dollars to $15,000 today. Free of state and local tax, free of taxes as you go along and hold it. And I'm talking about United States I-bonds. And I'm going to provide a link down below that you can either open an electronic account with the treasury or you can sign up for paper bonds. Banks don't do it anymore. Okay, it's all handled out of Parkersburg, West Virginia. Now, what are the advantages of holding these? And it used to be, you used to be able to buy $40,000 worth, but the government didn't want people flooding into government bonds. They wanted people putting their money into overpriced stocks and, and putting it to better use than that. But we need to talk about safety now. And we need to talk about return of principle, particularly in a world where political pressure is extreme. Risks are rising. Whole countries are being wiped out financially. Boy, did any wonder times like that that people gravitate to the U.S. dollar because, well, it's like the last bastion of uh, free-flowing funds and perceived safety in the world. Is it long run? That's another matter. 
But if you buy an I bond today and you sign up, you're going to get over 7% interest. Yes, 7%. You know what the average bank account pays now? 0.15%. 15 one hundredths of 1%. I think that pretty much defines peanuts, don't you? Imagine today you have an investment that every May 1st, and every November 1st, your I-bond will automatically reset to adjust to what the inflation rate was in the prior six months. We're ripping along pretty good on inflation now. So I'm thinking when the bonds reset in May, we're still going to be 7% or more in the CPI. You buy these, you hold them. For individual not for retirement accounts you buy them as an individual you hold them you have to hold them in a year for a year you cash them in before five years you're going to give up three months interest but big deal right just as long as you know you can get rid of them okay but in the meantime you're going to get a investment that the that the earnings monthly are reinvested automatically into the value of the bond you don't have to pay taxes as you go. You don't have to pay taxes for 30 years. And then at the end of a 30 year period, you pay a federal tax, whatever that is, but there's no state and local tax. What does that do for your addition, for your return? It adds, sweetens that even more. And it's so easy to sign up and set up an account. And it's the only place that I think today given the geopolitical uh, events of the world and the way things are unfolding, you should be seeking safe havens and security. Okay? Interest rates in the regular world are not keeping up with inflation. I-bonds have this beautiful feature that they take the inflation rate over the prior six months, they add it to a base rate and there you go. So if inflation continues and with all the money that's being created, at least it's going to maintain your purchasing power going forward. And it's going to give you an excellent return on your money. I'm going to provide a link. I'm not a registered investment advisor, but there's nobody in the world that can fault somebody for buying I-bonds. I being inflation protected bonds for as little as $25 electronically or $50 on paper you buy them at their face value and they start to rise $100 one starts to 112 120 150 180 200 and, and so on and so forth every bit of your earnings your interest is being reinvested a higher rate nice bonus a lot of cds you couldn't add to it as it went along right i bonds you can always add to them up to fifteen thousand dollars per person husband and wife thirty thousand dollars safe and secure if they go this well it's not a world any of us want to be in right so bear that in mind today when everything is overpriced that there is one last haven that you can get a great return. Once again, I will put the link in the description box down below. Check it out. You can look at the frequently asked questions. I know of nothing else. Yes, I like silver and gold. But for the average person stepping in now, when they could have gotten it for 2 $3 an ounce in 2005, or excuse me, in 1995, 1994, uh, you know, getting up 25, 26. But a lot of us are older and we want safety. And we want to know that no matter what, most everything else crumbles, this will be, this will be a good deal. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this today. What I would do with my money today, if I had extra, I would certainly pop it into I-bonds. 
So I'm going to close out. Please give me a thumbs up on this video. Hit the share button. If you think your friends and family might benefit from this information, hit the share button. Okay, give me a comment down below. And please subscribe. I'm doing more and more of these eco investment updates. It's a wild and woolly time, and you want to be informed. Diversity of opinion is a good thing. Thanks, everybody.